everybody. Welcome to day three of the virtual Rockstar Summit. You know, I love it that I get to see you all for like an hour every day. This is like super cool. Thank you so much for showing up. You know, I love you. And today is Vanya Clark Butler. Now, let me brag about Vanya a little bit. She is a very <laughs> humble gal, but she has been my coach for, are we working on four years or five years, Vanya? Oh, pop quiz. Um, <laughs> I know, I can't remember. Anyway, she's I think just, it's, I think this September will be five. Yeah. Because when you came out to visit, it was three and it, then we had COVID year and yep. Okay. Your, your memory is, is uh, much better than mine. Okay. So check this out, everybody. I really want you all to hear this. Even those of you who are listening to the recording, I would not be where I am today without the fabulous Vanya Clark Butler. Okay. So there's this book. If you're a business owner, you need to read this book. Or if you want to want to be a business owner, you need to read The E-Myth Revisited. Okay? The E-Myth Revisited is a book by Michael Gerber. Michael Gerber. And he shows you how to systematize your business so you are not crushed under the weight of being the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker of your business and putting systems into place so you can, you know, actually have a life and have your business be profitable and like, you know, live without you, that kind of thing. So I read the book. I was fascinated by the book. I read the book like two or three times. And then I saw that they offered coaching. So I was like, ooh. I need to do this. So this is my very first coach. Vanya is my very first coach. I met her through that. Then she started her own business. I've been with her ever since. Guys, I really want you to understand this. I was squeaking by, dipping into my savings, making like $4,000 a month. And if you live in California, you know how little $4,000 a month is when you've got rent and, and you know, so to Florida and the middle Midwest states, they're like, oh yeah, four thousand dollars a month. That's great. No, not in California. <laughs> not, in, not in California. So anyway, um, in the first year, Vanya took me from within months, she took me from four thousand dollars a month to twelve thousand dollars a month. Not bad for the first year, right? And over the years, she's helped me grow, and I would say. COVID, COVID, we, we were sustainable, which was a miracle, right? Uh, so the fact that we sustained, we were good. But now we're in growth mode. And we've seen record numbers this year so far in 2021. And it's all thanks to Vanya. So um, she will not brag about herself. I will for her. <laughs> very humble humble person like she's a complete badass but that's like a whole hour but we'll we'll just focus on what she's got but listen I want you to grab your paper paper and pens I want you to get on your computer and type take some notes because I'm not joking this woman brings it so with that said <laughs> darling please share your wisdom thank you thank you Jennifer Oh, she's so kind. You know, um, all of that work, you know, I was over there in the, on the sidelines, cheering her on, coaching, you know, but Jen did all the work. Jennifer did all of the work. So I, I give her all of the credit for that. <laughs> she's humble. I tell you, hey, Denise, welcome back. Okay, go for it, girl. So, yeah. So thank you for being here. Um, I, I have a saying that automating success in your business means automated systems and processes are working for you 24-7, 365. I don't know about anybody else, but I don't have anybody in my business working like that for me, except for my, my automated systems. Okay. And hopefully that's not you working in your business like that. And if it is, we're going to try to fix that today. So. <laughs> Okay, so I'm Vanya Clark Butler, and I'm a small business automation expert. I've been an early adopter of automation. I actually started in 2005, and the systems that we had then are, are totally different than what we have now, much, much more advanced. Um, but uh, I was intrigued with it from the very beginning. I couldn't wait to get my hands in there and dig in and make some magic happen, and, and I'm still doing that today. As Jennifer mentioned, I'm uh, also an EMIT trained business coach, and that's how we met. And uh, if you're familiar with the EMIT methodology, it's about um, 
uh, having systems and processes run your business and having your people run your systems and processes. So people are not running the business, you know, uh, the systems and processes are. And this is very much like a franchise model that, that they teach. But this is great for all businesses, even if you're not going to franchise, why not benefit, you know, from having things set up that way? So for our schedule today, and I'm so excited about being here. I had to make a, a schedule so that I could stay on track because I could go on uh, for hours <laughs> talking about this subject. So we're going to go over some uh, frequently asked questions that I get about automation. I'm going to give you two helpful frameworks that are uh, going to help you kind of pre-frame how to look at automation. It's going to take a lot of the confusion out of it. Uh, I'm going to have some automation examples to share with you that will hopefully inspire you to incorporate some of those into your business. And then we're going to save 15 minutes at the time at the end that I call Ava time, which is <laughs> ask Vanya anything. And that. so, uh, Jen, if you can help me out by keeping track of the time for me, because, you know, I, I get so excited. I, I won't I won't remember to look at the clock. Um, and also any questions that are coming up, um, feel free to ask questions as they come up. I may not, uh, I just to, to be able to go through everything and make sure we cover everything today, um, I may save those for the end, but um, don't feel like you have to save them. Uh, Jen, can you keep track of those for me? Yes, if you guys have questions, please put them in the chat or if you wanna take yourself off mute or, or you know, take yourself, put yourself on camera so we can see you waving so we know to ask you what you want to know. So yeah, totally. I'm, I'm down. I'm paying attention. Okay, awesome. Okay, so the uh, title of our talk today is Automating Success in Your Business Beyond Email Marketing. So first, just to, uh, to make sure we're all on the same page, everybody knows what email marketing is, right? Everybody's heard of email marketing. You're getting it. It's probably in your inbox every day. <laughs> we we also uh, we call it e email blasts, e blasts, broadcast emails, bulk emails. It's all uh, email marketing. It's basically taking one message and sending it out to everybody on your list. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's showing up in everybody's inbox every day. So uh, we're all having this experience, even if we're not doing it in our business, uh, we are the recipients of it, unless we live under a rock. So, <laughs> so these show up as um, maybe a salesperson tried to call you and they, they didn't get you. So they send you a, sorry, I missed you message, right? Is anybody getting uh, those kind of emails? Uh, birthday coupons from your favorite restaurant. Who doesn't love that? On your birthday, you're getting emailed uh, discounts for your for your favorite restaurants. And another type of email marketing is uh, shopping cart reminders. And so I have a cute story about this one. This one, uh, this happened to me recently. I was on the Chewy.com site. That's an online uh, retailer for uh, dog food and you know pet supplies. And so I was on Chewy.com and I, I put some uh, blue, blue buffalo uh, biscuits <laughs> treats in the cart and I got distracted and I went and I did some other things and I totally forgot about it. And I never checked out, never completed my order. And it was probably about five days later, I received a postcard in the mail from Chewy. And it had this sad puppy dog on the front of the postcard. It's a little message that said, did you forget something? <laughs> like my biscuits in your shopping cart. Oh, okay. They totally, yes, they totally knew what was going on. Uh, and they sent me a reminder, which was really helpful because I actually had forgotten and we would have come up short and we don't want that to happen. We don't want to run out. Uh, so those are just some examples of what you might be getting uh, already, you know, as, as far as email marketing. But we're going to go beyond that. We're talking about using automation, not to just blast out messages, um, you know, or reminders. This is um, more about automating your systems and processes. So when people ask me, what should they automate? It's your business systems and processes. Okay, and that's why this goes really well with my uh, EMIT uh, background uh, because their EMIT is all about setting up systems and processes and having them run the business. And now I like to uh, put those systems and processes on steroids by applying some automation to them. So this is what we're talking about is the systems and processes. So your and the automation, I like to call it the ace up your sleeve, because when you start automating your systems and processes, you're going to increase accountability, you're going to increase consistency and increase efficiency. 
So who couldn't use more accountability in their business? Who feels like they just, they have too much accountability in their business, <laughs> right? No, nobody, right? Everybody wants more accountability. And it's a challenge to, especially when you have team members, um, you know, to hold everybody, you hold yourself and hold others accountable. And automation helps to do that. It can, uh, when it's, when your tasks and the things that you're supposed to do are in the system and the system is keeping track of them, it will remind you that something didn't get done. You can see that something is overdue. Um, outside of automation, we don't really have anybody doing that for us in, in our business. So, um, so accountability is a huge thing. Consistency, we want consistency. We want things done the same way every time. We want every customer to have the same great experience. And when we can apply some automation to our processes, that increases our consistency. It makes sure it gets done the same way every time. The computer isn't going to think, oh, maybe I should do it different this time. It's just going to stick to the plan and get it done for you. And then efficiency. This increases efficiency in your business to uh, be able to have things working while you are doing other things, right? Freeing up your time. So, uh, so these are the A's, this is the ace up your sleeve that automation is going to help you uh, have in your business. Okay, so exactly what is automation, right? What what is it? Well, I want to give you a couple of frameworks. So, um, uh, automation is a broad subject. So first, automation software is uh, automation is software that uses an if this then that framework. So this is the logic behind the programming of any automation software. It doesn't matter if it's an online booking system, if it's an online marketing system, whatever it is, it's going to be using this framework. So something has to happen, that's the this. So if this thing happens, then I want that other thing to happen. Okay, so that's that's the programming, that's the logic behind it. And this framework helps you uh, when you're uh, building your systems and processes to decide, you know, what do I want to happen? Uh, if we go down this route, then I want this to happen. If we go down this other route, I want this other thing to happen. Okay, so that's all in the in the programming. Okay, so uh, my ITTT is my abbreviation for if this, then that. And a simple example of if this then that is, let's say you have an ebook offer on your website. Someone opts in to your uh, to your ebook. They fill out your uh, your opt-in form to get your ebook, and then your system delivers the ebook, right? So the trigger was they filled out the form, and then what happens after is the ebook gets delivered automatically. So that's a simple version of the if this then that. Now I want to talk to you about a more advanced version of this because I like to to bump things up. We gotta, we gotta plus this. <laughs> so an advanced version of this is they opt in for your ebook, your system delivers the ebook, your system tracks whether they download the ebook. And now we have more routing going on. If they don't download the ebook, then I want this thing to happen. And that might look like uh, sending them a reminder. Don't forget to download your ebook. Right. Um, and maybe if they still haven't done it, we send another one. Did you have trouble downloading your ebook? Right. But if they did, because the system is tracking whether they did or not, if they did download the ebook, then we ask for feedback. Okay. But only if they downloaded it. And then uh, we ask for feedback. And if they give us feedback, we send them a thank you email, but only if they gave us feedback. Right. So the system is tracking that. And this is the if this, then that scenario. Let's see, I have another one for you. Okay, so a simple if this then that would be someone books an appointment with you and they automatically receive a confirmation email and some reminder emails. Okay, very simple. Any booking system will, will do this for you. Okay, but let's bump that up a little bit. <laughs> let's take this to the next level. So let's say you have a list and you want to invite the people on your list to book an appointment. But you want to stop asking once they've done it. So the system needs to detect that that's happened. So we want to keep inviting them. Maybe we send several emails, but we want to stop inviting them once they have booked and then have the, the confirmation and the reminders go out. So that's taking it to the next level. Okay, so that's the first framework was the if this, then that. The second framework I want to share with you is what I call life cycle, uh, the customer life cycle. And this helps you decide what to automate and when. Okay, so 
um, this can, you know, uh, when people are first looking at automation, they're just like, oh my gosh, I have all these systems and processes. I have no idea where to start. Um, you know, how, how do I get started with automation? So, uh, so we're going to use the customer life cycle to, to help us organize what we're going to automate. It's going to uh, help us create a roadmap, a plan. And so I like to use the, the connect and convert system. And, um, and this is a, your, your customer uh, life cycle may look something like this, or it may look a little different. Um, but it usually starts with some kind of engagement. People have to become aware of you and start engaging with you. So that might be signing up for that ebook uh, you know, I mentioned before. And uh, at that point, we want to uh, nurture that relationship and convert them from a, from a lead or a prospect uh, to a customer. And so we have the convert stage. Once they're a customer, we want to delight the heck out of them, right? We want to wow them and impress them and make them really happy that they uh, started working with us. And then we get to the repeat stage. And that is basically just circling back around. Let me go to the next slide. So repeat, once somebody has bought from you and they're a happy customer, you just want to do the whole thing over again, right? You want to engage, convert, delight, engage, convert, delight. That never stops. That that is an endless loop. <laughs> Hopefully, you have you have more things to sell your your customers, and this can just keep going on. Um, and so they become repeat customers at this point because we're just looping them back through engage, convert, delight. Okay. Then we have expand. This is where uh, we have our customers actually help us grow our business. And then we have optimize. And optimize is disconnected um, from the from the chain because optimize is really more about something going on in the back end of your business, not necessarily um, part of your customer life cycle. Um, but it's part of your business. It's part of your your processes. Okay. So let's go. Uh, let's talk about engage first. Um, so at each one of these stages, uh, we're able to set up some automation. Uh, to help our business. And so engage is one of the most important stages. Uh, this is where your uh, people who are not doing business with you get to know, like, and trust you. This is where you're building a relationship with them. Okay, so an example of a automation process. Now, I have 35 automation processes that I can share with you. I can't share them all in this talk today. So we're just, we're going to cover a few of them, um, but I won't get to all 35 of them. But I do have an ebook for you, um, 35 ways to, uh, 35 ways to have uh, automation working for you in your business. Nice. So I'm going to share that with you. Vanya, real quick, um, Karen had a really good question. You were yeah. talking a couple of slides ago, uh, the connect and convert systems and then the repeat, yeah. and re right? Re rinse and repeat, right? Yes, well, if, rinse and repeat, that's right. And include loyalty programs. Yes, yes, absolutely. That is that is part of the expand. Gotcha. So when we when we get to that stage, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about that. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. Loyalty programs help us grow our business, right? It's gonna be part of of, of an expansion uh, strategy. Nice. Okay. Cool. So yeah, and we don't want to drop the ball on any one of these. We want to get because if you don't get people, uh, if you don't engage and convert and delight, then you don't get repeat business. If you don't get repeat business, you can't have a loyalty program. So there you go. <laughs> right. If you're <laughs> so these so each one builds on the on the next stage okay so okay so for our engaged stage uh we can automatically nurture new leads that are coming into our system okay and we can do that through uh, educating them building awareness telling your story and of course making offers but making offers was not first on this list because we don't want to just be sending emails that say buy my stuff you know buy my stuff buy my stuff buy my stuff we get a lot of that and nobody really likes that and nobody really wants to buy your stuff until they know more about you so they know more about uh so you build awareness around what you're offering and how it helps people so they have more information uh, people want to know your story so they can connect with that um, and of course, we're, we're going to make uh, make offers. But when we're sending out um, emails, like through a nurture series, and I do recommend that this be a series of, of emails. I have a family law attorney client that built 
52 emails to go out, one, one email a week for an entire year that talks about the things that people need to know when they're thinking about getting a divorce. So, you know, people might, they call her and they inquire about, about divorce, but they don't make that decision right away. There can be a very long sales cycle uh, for making that type of decision. And sometimes it's more than a year. Sometimes it's two years or three years before someone comes back and says, okay, I'm totally set up now. I want to pull the trigger on this. So she has 52 emails that, that go out that create awareness, give them tips, um, nurture that relationship, shows that she cares. And when they get to the end of the 52 emails, it just starts all over again. And nobody notices that they're getting the emails again, right? I mean, nobody's going to remember all 52 emails, and they're, they're not going to pick up that, oh, this is a repeating, a repeating series. And so she's run that uh, through some of her contacts for three years before they've called her up and said, I'm, I'm ready to hire you. Okay, so this is a lot of work to uh, to get all of these uh, these emails built. It's a lot of content, um, and this is something that you know we have our our uh, rock star marketing copywriter here on the call, Jennifer, <laughs> and this is something that that she's able to help with um, to. Uh, yeah, to build these out, to get them in a in the proper sequence, and to help uh, to write those. So know that you have a resource, you know, right here for that um, yes. if you're if you're struggling with that. Yes. Here's a question. Um, Renee asks, "What is an optimal frequency of emails to send out?" And and yeah, I mean, I get I get some emails every day from people, and I get them once in a while. And I can definitely spot a, a hungry salesperson versus a person who's providing me value. What have you found in your experience? Yeah, Karen's like nodding her head. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think is optimal? Yeah. So, you know, it really depends on your market. And so if uh, it, then this is why you want to know, you know, who, who you're actually talking to, right? We want to, we want to know who our ideal customer is. There may be other customers that you have that are not, or leads that come in that are not the ideal customer, but you want to make sure uh, when you're speaking to somebody that you're always speaking to the ideal customer with your messages. And so your ideal customer, you know, my, my uh, family law attorney, uh, she identified a weekly message to them. They need weekly support. They're upset. They're thinking about getting a divorce. They don't know what they're going to do. They have a lot of questions. And that's what a lot of her emails are, is answering the frequently asked questions that, that people have. And so they need this, this weekly support. And she's going to keep sending those. You know, they may never get a divorce. <laughs> they may decide to never do that. But they're going to keep getting these emails from her every week until they either become a client or they unsubscribe to the emails. Yeah, so, so, so we're, we're sending these. I mean, the, there's no end to this because uh, it's like you don't really end the relationship, right? You want to you keep the relationship going. So until the, the prospect ends the relationship by opting out or they change the relationship by, by hiring you, we want to keep them in this, in this nurture series mm. until that happens. Very good. Okay. Oh, and then, uh, and then hold on. So Renee writes, um, so segmenting my email list, say, from people who've bought and those who have not bought, would need different emails? Yeah, potentially, yes. So, so um, you're nurturing the relationship in the nurture series, then they become a customer, and we want to move them. There's going to be another series for customers, like a new customer welcome series, right? Gotcha. So, so we want that going on. Now, that doesn't mean that they don't um, come back to the nurture series uh, or stay in the nurture series, but we are moving them. Uh, we're moving them to the next stage. So some nurture series are going to be relevant, whether the person becomes a customer or not. Um, and some you may want to stop once they become a customer because now you have a new series of emails for them. And then so be depending on your business. There are so many things coming in the chat. Then Latasha is asking, how do you build an interested potential market to email if you have a new business? Aha, I think Vanya is about to jump into that right now, sweetie. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, so what you want to know, you know, who your ideal uh, client is, who are you serving? Now, you may serve a, a broad range of people, but it really uh, to target market, you want to be talking to somebody specifically. You know, is it a, a woman 40 years old? Uh, empty nester, you know, like we want to get really specific. It doesn't mean you can't serve other people, but when you're sending out your messages, if you're talking to everybody, you're talking to nobody. 
So you really need to be talking to somebody specific. And that's why we uh, want to have your, your ideal customer. Some people call it a um, customer avatar. Um, but it's really a, it's a profile of who you're talking to so that when you build your messages, you know you're talking to the needs of that specific person. Other people will identify with those messages too. Um, but like I said, if we're trying to talk to everybody and cover everybody, then our messages get lost and nobody really fully connects with them. Did that answer your question, Tanya? I think she'll type in the chat yes or no. But yeah, no, this is great stuff. Oh, yep, got it. How do you get those people? Aha. How do you get the people you identify as your as your ideal clients? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you're sending your uh how do you get them on your list, right? So before they can come on your on your list and get into your nurture series, we need to attract them. And so you may have a free uh, free ebook, you may have a video series, uh, you may have a, a PDF download, a checklist, um, you know, some kind of a lead magnet that's going to be geared towards your ideal client. Yeah, that's a good point. Like like Latasha, I have had over the years the opportunity to create stuff just to give away. So when I, it's a lead generator, right? It's like, I'll give you this free thing, my ebook or um, a, a checklist or something of value and you give me your email. And then that way I can add them to my Infusionsoft program and then they get my nurtures. So yeah. Yes. And edu oh, and then Karen brings it up. Great educational material. Yes, anything that you can do to educate and, and help people feel smarter. Um, they will trust you as the authority. So yeah, it's 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 like my book, the Give to Get principle. Just give give information and share, and you will find your ideal clients. You will find your tribe, and then add, make sure you capture yeah. that email, and then then yeah. you well, you can add them to your nurture program. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So what's important with these these lead magnets is. Um, you know, they're out there, your, your customers are out there and they need to find you. And when you have these free offers, that's what helps draw them in. It helps them to find you. So you're not going out there, you know, chasing around, trying to find them. You identified who they are, you built a profile, you've created a lead magnet uh, that's going to serve that profile and then you put it out there so they can find it. Okay, Yeah. thank you. You're awesome, Latasha. More questions, please. Okay, Rania, keep yes. going. Okay, so pop quiz. How long do you keep people in a nurture series? Forever. <laughs> right. Until they buy or opt out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Close to forever. Yes, as long as it takes. That's right. That's right. And that doesn't mean you have to have emails, three years worth of emails, right? Remember the, the uh, family law attorney had 52 emails. You could even just have 26 emails. It's half of that. And then just loop them back through, loop them back through. And, you know, how many emails do you put in your nurture series? That's a question I get. Well, it's as many as it takes to answer all the, the frequently asked questions, to educate uh, people about what you're offering, uh, to build awareness uh, and desire, you know, for what you're offering. And there's no limit to, to how many. It's whatever it takes to do that. And so this may be something that you uh, you start with a few emails and you build. You know, somebody might call you tomorrow and have a question. You're like, oh, that's a great question. I bet everybody wants to know that. Let's go write a nurture email about that, right? So you just keep building. Okay, so now we're moving on to the convert stage. This is where we, we, we want our messages to, um, to connect with people enough to where they want to work with us, right? And so we're gonna actually you know, convert them from a customer, from a prospect to a customer. One of the automations that I really like uh, for the convert stage is uh, automations that allow us to focus on our hottest leads first. And we can do this uh, with something that's called lead scoring, where the actions, the behaviors of the person, the things that they're doing, are actually giving them points to identify um, how strong of a lead they are, whether they're a, a warm, cold lead, warm lead, or hot lead. So a cold lead really isn't doing anything. They're not engaging. They're not interacting at all. Uh, a warm lead, you know, maybe opening your emails, clicking some links. Um, hot leads may be uh, sending you questions or um, clicking on 
um, like webinars or, or uh, things for, that you're providing that are, uh, that are educational for them. So we want to uh, give them some points for this. So let's say somebody opts in for your ebook on your website. That's your lead magnet. They get a point. Then they click the download link in the ebook. They get another point. They're a hotter, they're a stronger lead than somebody who does not download your, your lead magnet. Then they submit your feedback form. Remember, this is that if this, then that scenario that we covered a little bit earlier. So they submit your feedback form. Wow, they're really engaging with you. They get another point for that. Um, and let's say you send them an offer and they open your offer email, another point. And let's say they click the link in that offer email, another point. I would be calling them at this point. <laughs> this is a hot lead. Pick up the phone. <laughs> Call them. Uh, see, see how you can help them and how you can take this relationship uh, to the next level. So having some automated lead scoring so that you're not having to track this, you know, oh, who who opened up, who opted in for my ebook? They get a point. You don't want to do that manually. You want a system that's going to be doing this, that's going to be automatically assigning the points. I put these little flames up at the top because the system that I use uh, actually assigns lead flames. And somebody who has five flames is the hottest lead in the system. Now, if we have salespeople that are uh, working with our prospects, uh, sales team, sales reps, uh, they're going to love this because they want to work with the five flame people, right? They want to work with the hottest leads first. If they have a list of, of calls that they have to make, uh, being able to prioritize your hottest leads first and, and work with them um, is going to make your salespeople really happy and it's gonna bring in more revenue to your business. You know, I have a confession. I see I see these flames on my system and I don't even know what they mean. I finally now know what they mean, duh. Like, now you know. I'm on, fire. I'm on fire all the time, but yeah. No. yeah. <laughs> okay, so our next, um, our next stage is the delight stage. Uh, now you may have noticed I'm just kind of, I'm going through like my my favorite automation strategy one per stage, um, and like I said I'm just not, I'm not going to be able to cover all the ones that I love, but I do have that ebook that's gonna that has 35 of them in there that you're going to be able to get. Okay, so our delight stage. How are we delighting our customers? How are we giving them a wow experience? So we could have a new customer uh, welcome series, right? We can send them a welcome email. We can automate a welcome text message. We can leave an automated voice message. We can personally call them, uh, or we can send a gift or a card. Now, out of all of these here, all of them are uh, automatable, <laughs> except for one, personally calling, right? You, you can't automate that. You have to, to pick up the phone and do that. But the rest of these are automated. Now, for tasks or things that can't be automated, like picking up the phone, what can be automated is the task assignment, right? So maybe you want to assign a task to a team member or even yourself to, uh, to pick up that phone and call them, and you want to be able to track that. You want accountability, you want consistency, and you want efficiency with that. So being able to uh, have the, the task automated, the task assignment automated, gives you that uh, that level, that ACE level of uh, transparency into what's going on with them. Yes, you need reminders. Yeah, that's that's what that's what that is. It's reminding you. And with the task assignment, if somebody doesn't check off that they completed the task, then it ends up showing up on an overdue report. So there is accountability for that, and we can track that. Okay, sending a card or a gift, that can be automated. We have we have systems that I don't know if everybody's heard of send out cards. Uh, send out cards is a system that uh, that automates with with uh, some uh, marketing automation systems, and uh, you can trigger send out cards to just automatically send out a card. Um, and I can tell you, their brownies are really good. So <laughs> I have received and sent uh, brownies from send out cards. So they also have gifts. It's not just cards that can go out. Okay. Wow. Yes. So. Even I get to learn stuff in these presentations. I'm like, really? That's cool. Let's try it. <laughs> yes. Chocolate. Yeah. Good, good brownies. Okay, so so this is uh, part of our this is just one way to automate something in the delight, uh, in the delight stage. Okay. Um, the next stage is our expand stage. 
And so uh, we were talking, this is where uh, Karen was asking about the loyalty programs. Um, so one of my favorite automations in the expand stage is multiplying with referrals. So automating referral requests. Um, you know, we all know we're supposed to ask our customers for referrals. Everybody knows that. Uh, but how are you holding yourself accountable for that? How are you creating consistency and efficiency around actually doing it, right? So people, you know, uh, somebody asked me last week, if I start using automation, will it double my business? Well, <laughs> it depends on how you use it. But just this one strategy, if you ask every customer, every satisfied customer to send you a referral, you will double your business. They're, they're, the, the, it's the customer plus one, you know? So you got 10 customers, they send you 10 referrals, you've just doubled your business through referrals. So the automation um, can make sure that we're asking, we're consistently asking, but also um, track who referred whom to us, right? We, you know, we're gonna have a, a loyalty program and we wanna start rewarding people, then we need to be tracking who they're sending us. And we wanna reward those who are repeatedly referring us. Okay, and that can be set up with, with automation, right? If you want it to get done, let, let the computer do it. <laughs> okay, and um, this is just one of the of, of expand. A couple of others I just want to mention because I know uh, this is a, a really hot topic. People want to know how, how can I, you know, use my customers to help grow my business uh, or have them help grow my business. So asking for referrals, automatically asking them uh, for testimonials that you can use in your marketing. Uh, you can also automate uh, Google reviews. You know, you gotta, let's say uh, you have a customer, <clears throat> you've given them a customer satisfaction survey, they filled out the survey and they gave you, you know, high points on your survey. Now, because you got high points on that, you're automatically gonna send them an email asking them to give you a Google review and it's gonna have your Google uh, review link in the email, okay? So there's a, there's a couple more that we can do in the expand stage. Okay, pop quiz time. Okay, so <laughs> which is better, having one way to get 100 new customers or having 100 ways to get one new customer? Uh, Anybody want to take a crack at that? Karen says B. Yes, bravo, Karen. You got that. That's right. My brain is not working. I'm like, I don't know. They both look pretty good. <laughs> Well, if you have one way to get 100 customers and somebody takes that way away, right, it goes away. COVID took away some things. People were doing live events. Live events are gone. Nobody can do live events anymore. If that's how you were getting your customers, you had an issue uh, with that. So having 100 ways to get one new customer is, is better. If somebody can take away half of those, you still have the other half, right? Okay, we are at the, yes, multiple streams. Okay, we are at the optimi optimized stage. And this is where we're creating more efficiency in our uh, back office um, work that we're doing, our workflow. So we talked about automating uh, marketing, automating uh, new customer welcomes, automating referral requests. Um, but we, and we did talk about tasks a little bit. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more here. So uh, automating routine tasks. Automate tasks and task assignments to increase accountability, efficiency, consistency, and efficiency, our ACE system. And many routine tasks can be automated. And the ones that can't be automated, like I mentioned before, uh, what can be automated for them is the reminder, the task assignment. Um, and you can uh, get some accountability into whether those tasks are being completed um, by seeing if, if they're showing up is overdue, okay? Now, some people feel like automation um, shouldn't replace people. Um, and I agree, <laughs> because it can't. That automation really can't uh, replace people. But you can get automation to do the things that anybody can do. If you have some tasks in your business where you could just pull anybody in off the street and train them to do this, you could also train automation to do it, okay? This frees up you and your team to do the things that only you can do. Okay, the things that computers can't do. So that's what we wanna automate. We wanna automate the things that anybody could do for us. We could either you know, hire an assistant or we could have automation do it. So those are the things that we wanna automate. 
Um, and the things that only people can do, this frees us up for more time, for caring about our customers, for listening to our customers, for identifying their needs, um, for executing our bigger vision, you know, of our business and not getting, uh, you know, uh, bogged down with routine tasks. Okay, so that is uh, just about the end of my talk here, and I hope I inspired you to incorporate some automation in your business. I have some next steps for you. I have a uh, 35 ways to put automation to work in your business, so I only covered what, five, five or six ways. You're, there's a lot more in there. Um, also, um, I had, if you're new to automation, I have a don't wait to automate getting started checklist for you. And then I'm also offering anybody on this call who would like to book a free automation consult with me, uh, you can do that at my, uh, my booking link. Okay, and that's absolutely free and it's not a sales call. I know a lot of free discovery sessions are, are sales calls, but what this is for is to talk about uh, how you might be currently using automation and how you might improve that. Or if you're new to it, how you might even just get started. Um, and it would be a, a little bit more personal than, you know, to your business than what I'm able to do here on this call. Um, also, I would love you to stay in touch with me. I provided my email address, my phone number, and my Facebook link here for you to stay in touch. I love it. Write this down, folks, because you're going to need Vanya when you get big. Seriously, <laughs> I would not be where I'm at today without her. I, I, I rely so much on her. And um, she's the techie, and, and I'm the creative, and and and. I learn, but dang, it's just not my genius. So she and her team take really good care of me. So this is great. Okay, let's open it up to questions because, yeah, I mean, yeah, any questions all time. <laughs> so, um, Karen, okay, I'm just kind of curious and because I can see you. So take yourself off there. And Renee, I'm going to call on you as well. But Karen, how do you think automation could add benefit to what it is that you're doing? It it could really add a ton. You right. Know, I just I just sat and did a bunch of thankless tasks that I should have done last Friday, and here it is Wednesday, and some of those people are waiting for me, you know. And it's just and I, it, you know, the thing didn't take but fifteen minutes, but it's finding the fifteen minutes to do it is the you know that's the and there's seventeen of those behind those right so. Um, it would really help if you can get rid of the mundane, you know, the uh, here's the answer to the question, here's the stuff you asked for. So then, you know, you could be writing these emails, right, that are canned once. And hell, I can spend 15 minutes looking for an old email. I wrote this to another person. Who was it? When did I send it? And then, you know, I could have rewritten the thing in the time it spent me to look for it. Amen, sister. It would be slick. I have been there. I have so <laughs> been there, right? Yeah, it is just mind yeah. blowing. I mean, and and you know, it's it's funny. It's like I've been I've been working on my automation, but like I haven't even really gone into the deep stuff yet. Like I'm still, you know, I'd still say I'm in the in the first. Uh, I'm I'm up to my knees. Uh, in water. I haven't gone all the way over my head yet, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's only fun, Jennifer, when it kind of gets right here. <laughs> we haven't even dipped our toes yet. I feel I feel like I'm in, up to my knees. Maybe I need to get up to my waist, Vanya. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're what, right. I'd love, I'd love to ask, Vanya, what um, CRM kind of tools do you prefer and maybe which have you tried? to help with this kind of automated setup. Yes, yes. So, um, you know, my favorite um, automation tool is a all-in-one system that has the CRM, the marketing automation, the sales, um, sales pipeline, you know, e-commerce sales, but then also like a sales pipeline for, for salespeople, also uh, affiliate tracking. Um, I like to have a, an integrated system where everything is speaking to each other. Um, and so the one that I use is called Keep, formerly uh, known as Infusionsoft. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, and and uh, it's uh, it had a name um, back in the I don't know I don't know if anybody's still using that today, but I know at least like five six years ago it had the name Confusionsoft. Uh, <laughs> and, 
And it's because it has so many systems in one. People would look at this as like, oh, well, this is just like learning an email marketing system. No, no, it's learning five systems. It's learning an email marketing system, a CRM system, an e-commerce system, a sales system. Uh, you know, a system for your sales team and an affiliate system all in one. And you have to give yourself the time. If you were learning five systems, you would give yourself the time, you know, to learn each one. Um, and this system has to be approached the same way. But the benefit of having um, an all-in-one integrated system is you don't need connectors connecting to other, uh, to other systems for you. Okay. That takes the pain out of it. Thank you, Karen. Great stuff. Renee. Yes, that's a great question. I, I see that Renee's mind has been blown. Renee, put yourself on camera, honey. We want to see you. Um, I we see your blown mind. No, we don't see <laughs> Like that emoji with the, with the. Yeah, with the, you know. With the like, explosion out of the head. Yeah. Right, right. Oh, there we go. I thought I was on the whole Hi, time. Renee. Anyway, I'm all doing thumbs up. I'm all, you know, clapping. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, that's great stuff, Anya. I can see how I can immediately just really kind of uh, drill down on what I already have in place. Like I have, I have the, um, they're not as, as um, concise and, and I'll put together like your under the hood keep thing, but I, I use different systems uh, for my website and between, you know, MailChimp and Facebook uh, ads and my WooCommerce store. But luckily everything plays together and that integration is there. Now it's a matter of kind of going into the list and making use of those different categories of, of people who come to my list, whether they purchased or, or or opted in via a Facebook ad, and then nurturing them. I have a very small list, but there's a lot I can play with with what you've shown today to to write the e different emails uh, and and like especially the part where where I'm at right now, which is the engagement, which is to really educate, build awareness, and tell my story, and really just bring people more into who I am and what I offer rather than trying to go for a hard sell because no one's going to do a cold sell, you know, on, on anything I try to show to them. So it's got to be a little right. more just letting them know who I am. And that's where I'm going to focus on is with my existing client list is get them more into or more of my story. Um, yes. Get them more connected them. and engaged yeah. with you. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's been too much yeah. sale. It's too much sales right now where I'm trying to generate and not really get it, getting it because I'm not putting enough of my story out there. So, um, right. and showing them more content with value. So, yes. And yeah, when people are buying from you, they are buying your story. Right. And everyone that's, who that's, has kind of knows my story. So, yes. It, well, yeah, you, assume, you assume that, you but people, a lot. So, so for example, everyone on the call doesn't know what you do. So, why don't you tell them what you do? Yes. Oh, well, I'm an artist. So I do comic books, I do paintings, I do stories, uh, which is my main thing when I'm not, you know, working with Rockstar. So I do a lot of um, art in the background uh, or sketches and drawings, but it's it's very definitely very niche. Like I can definitely. My Renee calendar. Oh, there you go. Show you yeah, off. May. There's the month of May. It's May calendar. Yep. yep. Grab our Renee April, calendar. April is beautiful too. I love April. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. my birthday it's, month. Yeah, we, like, we, we love Renee's art. Oh, yes, cool. yes we do. <laughs> so yeah, that, that, that's so that's my art. Um, and I'm doing comic books too, so. Yes. Well, so you yeah, can do Vanya, a thank lot. you, because uh, I, I, you know. You can do a lot with a small list, Renee. Um, it, you can do more with a small, engaged, and connected list than you can with a right. bigger list of people who are not engaged. Yeah. Engagement Absolutely. is the biggest yeah. thing. Yeah. So creating awareness, uh, sharing your stories, that's what's going to create that engagement and that connection. And I think the yeah. big key word is the nurture because it's not a one and done thing. It's a, it's a consistently yes. engaging with them. Yeah. So and we want you. to look at this. I like the dating scenario. I like to use this a lot in marketing. You know, we don't just go meet somebody and get down on our knee and propose. Yeah. Right. That's the sale. 
that is the sale is the proposal. We don't do that. We go out, we date, we get to know each other. You know, we have a, we have a period of, of uh, you know, connecting with each other before we take it to the next level. And with sales and marketing, a lot of people are like, hey, we just met, let's get married. I'm ready to take it to that top level. <laughs> right. And then we spend three years trying to figure out how to divorce them. <laughs> <laughs> or more. Or more. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Did we really get to know them enough to know that we want to have a longer term relationship relationship with them? Right? No. So true. That is so true. Yeah. Annie, um, I'm, I'm a, I have a my email list and I think what's most amazing about mine is I get about fifty percent opens, right? When I send out that's a That's wonderful. Like, yes. Right. So it's very high. You know, I, I'm shocked at the, you know, the number of people that open it, right? So you have a very engaged I'm list. Standard, but they're engaged and they like my content. And they're even now sending me emails back going, love the last article, you know, more please. And that's how Yay. you know kind of on target, right? You're going yes. to be on target. It, you'll get, first it was nothing. And then now I'm just starting to get, your articles are so interesting. They are. They are very <laughs> Which one did you like? <laughs> right. Right. No, that's awesome. They cared enough. They it can, they connected with it enough to want to give you feedback. Right. And that yeah. was like, okay, I think, I think I'm, I think it's working. <laughs> yeah. And now just for, for everybody who's listening, a 30 to 35% um, open rate is, a, is good. That and it's going to be different. Uh, industry standards are different for every industry. So you, you may want to check out, you know, what is the industry uh, standard for your in specific industry, but just as a, of a broad uh, give you a broad idea between 30 and 35 percent is considered uh, very good. So what Karen has is exceptional. She has a very engaged list. Very cool. Yes. Yeah, I'm a recipient of some of her articles, and she's she does put pour a lot of really cool stuff into her articles. Um, I'm kind of curious. How do you start your list? Right, my list started with my friends. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So, Did you hear that? To other people, right? So like Vania said, right? If you have one customer ask for a referral, if you know somebody who needs this information, forward it. And now I'm getting people to start to sign up. So yes, yes, that's great. That's so cool. Yeah, just word of mouth. You're just doing it through through word of mouth. Yeah, that's the, the, the best uh, advertising, the most effective advertising you can have. For sure. And you can't um, pay for that. You, you know, it's the, it's the best advertising money can't buy. You know, that, that you bring up a point. People do spend money on getting leads, but it's I'd rather go with people I know because you know it's going to be more real than it is these, these strangers. I mean, yeah, you want people who you don't know to discover you, but I, I personally am, uh, I would prefer to do things organically than paid. Now, I know that paid advertising has its place, and Renee and I are starting to do some of that, but I really just love the organic growth of the brand. That way you know they're real, you know, you have a relationship with them, and you just nurture them and wow them and all that stuff. Um, Tanya, I know that you're on mute, and I know that you're off camera, but if you're around, I know that you're in charge of NARI, Silicon Valley. I'm kind of curious, because you're, you're managing all of that with that group. How are you using automated systems with what you do, Tanya? So this topic is, was, is, is very timely for me because um, Silicon Valley is one of three associations that I have to manage. So, oh, yeah. Uh, you manage yeah. several. <laughs> <laughs> so because of the volume of work that comes my way, I've been looking, um, researching this. And so when I saw this in the, the list of uh, topics this week, I was like, okay, this is what I need. Um, Yay! Yeah, looking at systems, looking at um, the only downside is that working at a nonprofit, the budget for uh, a pay system, sometimes I can, it, 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 the uh, cost is always a factor, I should say. Um, so I'm trying to find uh, free ways or low, low cost ways to managing the, the volume of interactions with, um, and any of you are members of associations, you know, you have membership, you have marketing, you have the various, um, uh, aspects. 
and you have to touch all those people at certain points or respond to emails or phone calls and, and they, it can be a lot if, if it's not organized or automated yeah and, so, and yeah. you said you're doing this for three different associations honey? correct yeah wow uh, the last two just came in the past month so yeah definitely even now i'm, I'm trying to multi multicast i'm listening in but at the same time i have to do the things that you're talking about get back to people and respond and how do i do that because it can become a lot. I don't want to be, you know, working at night and on weekends, which is happening <laughs> now, um, because there's just so much to do. And and then um, I'm the only paid staff person, so the rest are volunteers. And this is a guarantee that I'm going to get an action from them. So I feel like a lot of it falls on me. So if there's a way of automating this and making it easier for myself, so that things at least members or or the, or the public hears or sees from us um, and doesn't fall through the fall through the um, um, loophole or, you know, or, or the crowd um, that, that, that certainly would, would, would be great. And so I'm trying to figure that way out because I am taking over these new clients that are also have its ongoing issues. So I'm trying to find a solution as well. Um, yes. So how, how do they maintain their members? And if we're not contacting their members, that's an issue. How do we reach out to new members? And how does that process look? Because sometimes it's just not one email or one phone call. As you were saying, it takes multiple times of connecting with someone. So yeah, so so again, Vanya, thank you. This And Jennifer, and uh, this is a very, this came at the best time for me because I the past two days have been working and then looking at ways of automating and working and finding ways of automating and some stuff uh, I'll try. It's like, okay, that's not going to quite work, but I'm glad that I can see some examples here um, of things that I can do. Yes. Yes. You're, you're welcome. And you have a unique situation, um, Tanya, but it, re it reminds me of a question um, that I get from people who have multiple businesses. Uh, mm -hmm. So when they're looking to, so you know, may have somebody that has three, three different businesses, they may be, um, you know, connected in some way, or they could just be totally different, you know, totally separate, unrelated businesses. Um, but they'll come to me and they'll say, you know, um, I don't want to get three different systems. You know, can I run all three of my businesses from from this one system? Now, I can't speak about other um, automated uh, software, but I can talk about Keep, formerly Infusionsoft, because I've been working with that one since 2005. So I'm intimately uh, familiar with, with that one. We're married, by the way. Um, so um, that one, um, you can operate multiple businesses. You can keep them separate. Um, and I'm wondering for your associations, ideally, they would all have their own system um, because they're separate um, businesses with separate owners, you know, uh, but you being the common thread between all of them. I think if I was having trouble getting them into an automated system, I would uh, set them all up in the same in the same system and segment them uh, to, to keep them separate um, just to, to get them started with, with automation and to make your life easier. You know, otherwise you're going to go crazy if you have two different systems. You're going to go nuts. <laughs> and Tanya, take it from me, like Vanya is Vanya. I don't know your pricing, but she made it affordable for me. Because when you're dipping your toes in, you're you look at us, you look at a certain system, you're like, <gasps> you know. So don't yeah. worry about being a nonprofit, sweetie, because even as a nonprofit, you're still needing to make money. You still need to survive and you don't want to be working yourself into the ground. Oh my God. Right. Right. Yeah. So yeah you two need to talk. You no, know, Jennifer, <laughs> some companies offer different pricing for nonprofits. So I would definitely ask about that. Right. To see I, I'm a nonprofit. Do you have a deal for me? Because that might be completely different. Right. Oh. Oh. Yes, yes, and I work with I, I work with a lot of nonprofits and uh, and and beginners. So I have uh, I have tiered you know pricing for for different levels. Yay! Um, oh yay! We got a match made in heaven. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, I would love it's to do I would love to do a, a free uh, automation consultation uh, with you, Tanya, to uh, speak specifically about what you're dealing with and and how uh, automation can help with that. Let's yes. do that. Okay. Yay! I love it. Matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. I love it. I love when I put people together. So I love talking about this. It does, you know, I don't if whether you want to buy 
you know, start, uh, you know, buy some automation now and start now, or you're just gathering information to start later. Um, this just makes such a big difference uh, for businesses. I love to introduce people no matter at what stage that they're at. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to just nurture you and send you information until you buy. So <laughs> <laughs> there's the honesty there. And then Latasha and Denise, did you guys have any questions before we wrap things up? I'm so glad you girls are here. Yay. Yes, thank you. Yes, this was great. Thank you. Yes, you're yeah. welcome. It's nice to know that like the system can work for you. It can be your salesperson. It's like a it's like a person on your team that's well, that doesn't require employee benefits and 401ks and you know what I mean? Like it is another portion of your team and it's it's nice. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie it takes some it takes a, a bit to get it going yeah. but once you know that it's running it's like oh you know it's great stuff it's how you guys you hired somebody off the street or you know put an ad out and hired somebody you would have to spend time training them you're going to invest that time one way or another you know the yeah. beauty is the automation will do exactly what you tell it yeah. it doesn't take days off it doesn't right. have Bad days, you might have a bad day, but it doesn't. It does exactly what you tell it. So yes. once that up, you're cruising. Yes. yes. I mean, yeah. how it, it has it. How does you guys it like clockwork? Of this particular event, it was through automation. There's, there's no way I could have manually sent out all those emails uh, at the same time every day. Like that's all automated. So yay. Yeah. And track wow. track res registration so that we could send the the people who actually so once you once you uh saw, once you registered, we stopped inviting you and we started sending you confirmation and reminder emails. Yep. And then right. I'm automatically even, I'm even using the system to like, okay, we had 64 registrants, right? So mm -hmm. when I sent out the 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 uh, replay video last night. Mm -hmm. Of Melanie, I used the keep system to do it as opposed to me going and hunting down 64 different emails. I just went ahead and sent, pushed send a broadcast, did a little message, put in the link, done. It saved me a while of saving some time. So, no, this is great. And then, and then here's the best part, guys when I don't know what I'm doing, Vanya, what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> yes yes and and when we've done something and and you know we've completed it then just like okay what do we do next right and i'm just taking you through that that same uh that same framework you know the the um connect and convert you know yeah. framework that we're just going through the same thing yeah i recommend that you set up something in each one of these stages one thing and then go back and set up another thing in each one of these stages and not try to fully build out and have a bunch of things in each stage right away, you know, because then you're not moving on uh, to, to the other stages. Yeah, that's true. That is true. I can still see on this list, there are areas that I haven't built out yet, but mm -hmm. yeah, you're right. It's a growth thing, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we'll get there. I love I've it. got the okay. map. Hi, I've got the map, Jen. <laughs> I know, seriously, and like even Renee and I were working on creating a funnel, and like we're doing some things with a scorecard, and it's super cool. And even we were like, okay, now how do we get people to join in on this? Is this an ad, or is this an? What do we do with this again? Like, oh, we better ask Vanya. Like, like she's with you every step of the way. She doesn't leave you hanging. She's incredible. I'm making you out to be a goddess, girl, which you are, but like you know. Seriously, you really are a lifesaver. Okay, so here's what we got. We are at the top of the hour. I want to respect everybody's time, but I'm so happy. Vanya, honey, you knocked it out of the park. And thank you for thank your you. slides. Because you're you you win the prize for like the slides of the week so far. <laughs> but like truly, there's so much information here that we we Renee and I, we have been working with you and we're like, oh my God, my love, right? So Join us tomorrow, everybody. We're going to have Angie Lopez. Uh, for those of you who have met her through the Susie Carter tribe, Angie is phenomenal. She's an attorney. She's going to help us with like um, outsourcing stuff, contracts, like how to make sure that, you know, everything is done in alignment. And there's going to be a lot of interaction here. Like her presentation is going to be a bit more open ended so we can just ask anything. You know, so it, so this is going to be a really good one tomorrow. And then um, 
Friday is going to be Marusha Murphy about community community building on the social media channels. And then I've got the video marketing. So we're only halfway through, everybody. We're only in day three. We got six days. So woo, woo. we'll see you guys tomorrow. Love you. Have a beautiful, productive day. And contact Vanya if you got questions. Okay? Right. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.